What's up you guys, Jade Struck here. I'm happily with Omaha Outdoors and today we're gonna to be talking about switching gears and knowing thyself. So two part approach, I've got my targets out here. I wouldn't necessarily set these ones up in a training session, but for demonstration purposes, I've got my target A that's closer to us and our target B that's further away from us. Now we're gonna talk about switching gears, this concept, right? So we know that if we're engaging a target that's the distance between me and, and the camera, which is about five to seven yards, I can engage that target, a target much quicker because it's closer to me and I have a bigger target as opposed to my target that's further out. Now the target is smaller and I know I really need to mm, shift it back, get a good side alignment, get a good trigger press, right? So I have more room to push up close than I do out far. This is the switching gears. I can engage a closer target at around fourth, fifth gear, right? I can engage it, I see it, I'm on it, I'm engaging it much quicker. I have to shift my gears down to about second, third, depending on where we're at, sometimes it's first, to really make sure that I'm getting a good sight picture and trigger press out far. And so that is also going into knowing thyself, knowing what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses. So for me as a shooter, my strength is I can push up close, I know. And my weakness is that when I get out far, I have a tendency to try to push way too fast on my target that needs a little bit more time. So I really make it a point when I'm switching those gears to take my time. So when I'm engaging a target out far, let's say I'm coming out of the holster and I'm going out far, I'm not reducing or switching my gears on my draw cycle to do a really slow draw cycle stroke. I'm maintaining the normal speed of my draw cycle. However, I'm switching gears on how I engage that target target by really making sure that I got a good sight picture and not rushing my trigger press, giving him his due. So just a good reminder is like the guys out far, they need a little bit more attention. The guys up close, they're good to go. They need a little bit and then you move on, right? So we're making sure that we have adequate time and attention given to those that need our attention, switching gears. We can often train that with a drill with the target array just like this. We're two targets, that's all we need. One target close to us, one target farther away from us. Ascending as these are, or you can have them spaced out and work on target to target transitions as well. But what I would do is I would come out of my, tar or out of my holster, engage my target A at around a fourth gear, and then boom, switch it down to second gear as I transition to my target straight out far and really make sure I give him the time and attention needed. That also means with our cadence when we're shooting our guys out far, it's instead of boom, boom, which is when we're up close here, we got that more quicker cadence with the less time in between our shots to boom and sights and trigger boom, right? So it's boom, boom versus boom, boom cadence. We can only go as fast as our sights and our trigger press allow. So I need to make sure that I've got a really clean sight picture, a really clean trigger press for those guys, especially out far. That also goes into doubles, right? When we're talking about double taps, they're two individual shots. Most of the time what happens is we aim on our first one and then whoop, we let our second one fly. We're like, oh, I've got my side picture on my, on my first one. I've got to get it on the second. Not true. You want to make sure that you have two clean sight pictures for two individual shots. And that goes into knowing thyself, knowing your cadence, what is normal for you. That comes through training, right? Live fire training. Dry fire, we can't train cadence unless we're using like an airsoft rifle or pistol that gives us a little gas blowback because we're still moving at the speed of our recoil management. Right, so knowing thyself, knowing thy strengths and weaknesses. So when I'm out at the range, I'm shooting a competition, I've got a great target array, I know when I hit this position or I go to engage this target, I gotta boom, drop my speed down. But then when I transition, I switch my gears back up to third or fourth for my mid-range shot, and then I can switch it back up to fifth if I've got an even closer target. So that's a competition state of mind knowing how to gauge your ability to engage targets far out and closer up. And it is a huge strength 
to be able to slow yourself down. We do it in my classes with our draw cycle. When we warm up, we start at the 60% because just as important as it is to be able to get your sights and your trigger press quickly, it's also important to really be able to hone it in, pull back on those range and go at a speed that really allows you to feel everything that's going on. So I can draw out of my holster at a 50% or at an 80% right, which I usually stick around 75, 80. There's no reason why anybody should go and be t going more than 90% on a draw cycle. I don't feel that it's necessary. You get your pistol out, you get a good side picture, that's all you need, so always be safe when you're training. There's no need to push it for the sake of video or cool factor, not worth it, right, not worth the risk. Make sure that you're going at a speed that is safe for you. Always train safe, always train smart. Get to know yourself as a shooter, right? We're all different. We all have different strengths and different weaknesses. A uh, weakness in my grip is that I really need to make sure that I keep that left hand tight. That can be the case for a lot of people, but it's not always the same. So know what it is that you individually need and require. Know where you can push and where you need to rein it in and spend that time getting to know yourself, your gear, and who you are as a shooter. Thank you guys for watching, Jade Struck here. Thank you Omaha for having me guys. Get out, train, train hard, train safe, and make sure that you always have a plan. Thank you guys.